and here we are. This is Jim at the House of Pooh Corner, and we are trying to focus in on Connor Kelly right now, who's joining us from Boston, and uh, we're finally coming into focus, it looks like. And uh, the reason I asked Connor to be my guest is because he's of Irish descent from Boston, and I thought somebody like that should have a pretty good yeah. perspective on uh, what's going on in the world. And we've been communicating on the subject of Julian Assange, yeah. Syria, and various other topics of interest from people like Telsey Gabbard to Bernie Sanders. Yeah. And so I'm wondering, Kelly, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, what, where you'd like to start today? Uh, sure. I, uh, um, I was born in uh, Brighton, which is a section of Boston, um, and I've, I, I went to school down in Philly at St. Joseph's University, and now I'm back uh, living in Boston again. So this is uh, my home. It's kind of been a magnet for me. Mm -hmm. A lot of family around here, basically my whole family. So. Uh huh. And tell me a little bit more about your ancestry coming over from Ireland. Right. Uh, on my father's side, uh, I don't know how many, if it's a great-great-grandfather or great-great-great-grandfather, but he came over in the late 1850s, 1860s to avoid the uh, Irish famine. And uh, so he was the first Kelly to arrive in America. Um, and then... My uh, the, my mother's side of the family came um, in the 1930s, mm -hmm. and they they all managed. They came through. They came through Canada, and everyone kind of managed to settle in Boston, the Greater mm -hmm. Boston area. And so, uh huh. One yeah. of one of my relatives, one of my many Australian relatives, and my family's Australian, basically oh. married. An Irish lady, oh, early 1900s. Yeah. And um, we were very proud to discover that she was a convict. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a, a, well, a convict you know. sent to, uh, well, she wasn't, but her family were convicts yeah. sent to Australia. Yeah. Uh, ex excommunicated from, the, from England and, and sent yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they like to pick up the, quote, undesirables and send them off to the colonies. Yeah. You know, for whatever reason, real or imagined. Yeah. Of course, it was a matter of shame at one point, but now the, the Aussies are frantically looking to prove that they had prison prisoners in their ancestry. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah. Uh, and a lot, a lot of Irish went to Australia. Yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah, my family in Australia was the exact opposite. They were business people coming from Scotland. They went to India, and from India, they went to Australia. And uh, anyway, here we are. Why don't you uh, tell us a little bit now about the topics that uh, we've been discussing on Facebook? Um, so I guess, I, I, uh, can you hear me? Is everything good? I can, I can hear you. It's a little muffled. I don't know how the audience is, is, is getting it out there, but I can I can hear you fine. Okay, so I guess starting with uh, Tulsi Gabbard, um, uh, she, obviously she, people kind of forget the impact she had in 2016 when she quit the DNC over its treatment of Bernie Sanders. And I thought that was kind of a huge moment that, that kind of slipped under the radar and is, and is kind of being washed away these days. That was like, a, that was a very big deal. She quit the DNC because they were treating, because they're basically acting like a corporation, treating a legitimate, powerful candidate um, with disrespect and, and, and subterfuge and all types of things. And she stood up against that quit and uh dnc you know just was running wild trying to trying to figure out a way to make that not seem so bad and um and so now obviously she's out to candidacy and um i'm a supporter of her i don't support everything she does i mean she's in the military 
and that might turn some people off, but she also is very active in veterans affairs and the health of veterans and obviously cares about where our troops are sent. I don't think she's going to be caught up fighting someone else's war for them. Um, she, uh, she was the only person in Congress to actually go to Syria and, uh, and see what was going on for herself. So, uh, and I think that took a lot of guts and I think it rubbed a lot of people in government the wrong way. And mm -hmm. um, so I've been reading a lot, reading and hearing a lot of, uh, of stuff where they're trying to find someone, even, even Bernie met with the DNC recently, I heard. And so I think they're just trying to, trying to uh, kind of get her out of the way, so to speak, quickly. And uh, so she doesn't get to build up the kind of grassroots support that that sort of surprised everyone in 2016 with Bernie Sanders, and uh, you know him with like him having won every county in West Virginia, yet because because of super delegates, Hillary won the state, which I find is is totally uh, a backwards and um, and and the Democratic Party is certainly undeserving of the name. Mm -hmm. So. Uh, I'm not sure if you have any any thoughts on that on Tulsi Gabbard or, or you know how you feel about that what's going on uh, you know how she's handled herself or if you disagree with her on certain things. Mm -hmm. Well, I've recently looked at her site very carefully, and I've recently looked at all the negative comments that I hear mm -hmm. from the progressives about yes. Tulsi Gabbard. Yeah, and the site wins in my opinion at this point. So I agree with you that she's got more on her side than she does against her. And I'm following the, what she says and what she does as much as I can. Quite right. And I put out a post a long time ago, uh, I don't know, a couple weeks ago, I should say, in which I said, I think the key to knowing whether or not Tulsi Gabbard is for real, in other words, is, is she a real progressive, is, is she um, honest, will be whether or not the mainstream media picks up on her uh, candidacy. If they exactly. do the same thing to her that they did to Ron Paul, yeah. then we'll know that Tel Tulsi is for real. And, and yeah, she's exactly. a, a good, hardworking, honest person. That, that's, that's kind of my measuring stick. You, you little people out there can measure her however you want. Um, yeah. But I don't believe that the negative things that I have heard are anywhere near as important as the positive things that I know she has done. She has right. stood for pulling out of Syria. Yep. And, the, you know, the Democrats are running around like chickens with their heads cut off trying to think yeah, all the, of, all of, the of a way to... Pro war, you know? You know, so I, I do think pulling out of Syria is a landmark decision that Trump made. And Absolutely. any Democrat who goes against that is just following the line of the DNC and the deep state. So exactly. that's, that's, that's kind of how I feel about Tulsi Gabbard or Gabbard at, yeah, this, at yeah. this point. But again, I'm waiting to see how the mainstream media picks up on it. Um, yeah. I have no respect for Bernie Sanders at all. I live in Vermont. I know his career. I've seen him backstab yep. the Liberty Union. I saw him backstab Ron Paul. I've yep. seen the lies he told about the F-35 and Lake Champlain. Yep. Uh, so I've really had it with him. So okay. I'm wondering, he's, he's clearly within the DNC, yep. in Absolutely. DNC heaven yeah. right now, because he signed on to the DN, DNC with his future candidacy. Okay, I'm with you. So we'll see. I, I would be disappointed in Tulsi Gabbard if she fell for a um, matchup. Yeah, right, with right. Him. Yeah, exactly. Oh. And a lot, a lot of people, I think, are hoping for that. And, and I just don't, I think, um, uh, obviously you being in, being in Vermont have, have, have had more um, direct, kind of coverage and contact with Bernie Sanders. So you probably know more about him and his, his uh, less reputable uh, actions than I do. 
Um, obviously, I wanted him, wanted him to be president in 2016, um, and when, and once the DNC, uh, you know, made it pretty clear that from the beginning that uh, Hillary Clinton was a was a candidate, and uh, also went on to prove it in open court that that they argued that uh, there's no such thing as a Democrat, that the platform is basically meaningless. Um, and, and things like that. They basically expose themselves as a private corporation who supports certain candidates, and you can support them if you want. Basically, ultimately, it's up to us, and, and you don't really have a have a voice in it. So, mm-hmm. so it's really hard to support Democrats now, any kind of Democrats. But Tulsi again is when when she quit the DNC. She made a big statement. I I think she sticks with the the Democrat because um, before she did that, obviously they they helped build their career. They they you know they got her money to uh, to run and all this kinds of stuff. So she probably has some loyalty to the party. Mm -hmm. Um, But I I also feel she has a very strong sense of who she is, and uh, and you know uh, someone who was who fought in the front lines as a medic. And, and cared for injured troops, uh, I feel is going to be much less likely to use those troops for for say you know for for war profiteering purposes. Mm-hmm. Um, she has a deep deep uh, love for the for the troops, yeah. like um, you know some other candidates and stuff like that. So um, as the end, as far as Bernie, you know he lost me. Um, the the second he told people to vote for Hillary, and uh, and and that was probably long after he lost you. But again, you you know you've had closer contact with him and stuff like that. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I definitely um, I definitely uh, agree that that Bernie isn't isn't who at least I. Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, so so and and now that that it's come out that he's. He's uh, having meetings with the DNC. To me, that can only mean two things. Either they know he's the only person who can beat Trump, so they're trying to work out a way for him to to, to be accepted by the banks and whoever, stuff like that. Or two, um, you know, they're trying to figure out uh, how to use him as a controlled opposition to get one of the establishment candidates in. Either way, he's working with the DNC, um, the same organization that torpedoed his candidacy, and, and that just that just that just uh, you know says 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 a lot to me. Mm-hmm. Um, without without saying really anything, it says you know it says a lot. Yeah. Well, knowing him the way I do, I would uh, predict that he will do anything, literally anything, the DNC slash deep state, if you will tells right, him right. to do and just look at what he did to Ron Paul when they they almost had the Federal Reserve on the ropes right they had a wonderful bill in hand and he undermined it and stabbed Ron Paul in the back and that was many years ago yeah and that was after I knew what he had done to my friends in the Liberty Union Party in Vermont that's right. ages that's real ancient history that nobody cares about <laughs> any, anymore anyway uh, I mean, I know people who hired him when he was a young man first coming up from Brooklyn. Yeah. So that's that's kind of where my knowledge of Bernie goes back to. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we'll we'll take a look. We'll we'll watch Tulsi Gabbard, and I have no problem with her being in the army. A lot of progressives say, "Well, I'm not going to vote for anybody who was yeah. in the army." Well, I that's about as close-minded as you can get. Yeah, I think. Yeah, it makes no sense. And and that kind uh, of offends me that these intelligent people would say something like that when essentially, yeah. uh, from what I've heard, you're right. She was a medic. Yeah. Um, you know, I was in the army. I got I got drafted, but and she didn't. But yeah, still, yeah. Yeah. still and all, you know, the fact that you've been in the army. My friend Denny Marceau was in the army as a lieutenant and ended up on the front page of the New Yorker because he refused to go to Vietnam. So there are a lot of really good, solid people in the Army. And yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think it's, it's naive and a, a lack of thinking, a, a, a lack of openness 
to say I'm not going to vote for somebody because that person was in the army. I mean, there are very few people, people like that, but they're out there. Yeah, yeah. So but, let's, um, oh, another thing Bernie did, he, he has signed on to the Russiagate thing. Now that's- Yes, 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 that was the, uh, yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah. yeah, that's DNC telling him to sign on to the Russiagate thing. Not that, not that they need to tell him because he knows what he's supposed to do yeah. for them. Yeah. And he also eventually signed on to the fake news that the Washington Post put out about Putin interfering with the Vermont electric grid. So yeah. we have our Senator St. Patrick Leahy who signed on to that, Peter Welsh, they both went, oh, oh my God, this is terrible. Putin's messing with our electric grid. Well, it was fake from the beginning. And, yeah. and then finally Bernie signs on to it. So anything that he can do to stick Russia in the eye, he will do. And I find that rather worrisome. <laughs> that, yeah, that, yeah, uh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. It's the uh, the whole rush. I mean, Hillary created the whole Russia Gate thing the night she lost, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know, as a way to deflect. And then she wrote that book on basically how to be, how to not be responsible for any of your own actions or mistakes, and uh, and it it, it just. The, the, the Russiagate thing is just they keep saying you know there's always a new allegation again and uh, recently Robert Mueller came out and said he has rock solid evidence that Trump committed a felony or something and to me if he had anything rock solid wouldn't they have used it by now uh, like what are they waiting for like there's a 31 day government shutdown if they have rock solid evidence to the president committed a felony or any kind of crime. Like, what is he waiting for? If that's if that's the truth, you know. Mm -hmm. And then and, and then it comes out that like Russia spent uh, forty seven hundred dollars on Facebook ads or something like that. You know, something totally irrelevant mm -hmm. um, when compared to the money that say um, like a country like Israel contributes to our election. You know, nobody mm -hmm. talks about that. And uh, so. There's just a lot of a, a lot of hypocrisy, a lot of uh, um, uh, just nonsense going out, and, and, and you know it's. I mean, it's when you think about the news, the whole fake news narrative. It's not. It's not fake news. It's corporate have an agenda, and they're they're sticking to that agenda. And you know what I mean. So, mm -hmm. I mean, you can call it fake news because it's not the truth, and and. Reporters who report the truth either get locked away in an embassy in another country, or they have to flee the country to a place without extradition to, you know, to properly keep tabs on the U.S. government and, their, and the crimes they commit. So, it, you know, it's like uh, the whole mainstream media mechanism is just one big uh, corporate PR scheme, and uh, you know, I, I yeah, I call it. I call it. I guess I call it fake news, but but more uh, more accurately, I think I think I call it just just um, directed news, propaganda, if you will. You know. Mm -hmm. Well, I think there's specific fake news within that umbrella that you're describing. Yeah, yeah. So, so the specific fake news would be the weapons of mass destruction in right, Iran, right. leading us into that. Um, yeah, I could I could go on for hours about the specific fake news that we had, but you're right. Yep. Yep. Overall, you've got the the DNC, the RNC, the mainstream media, the deep state, all on the same page, under yep. the umbrella of well war, under yes. the umbrella of yep. the war economy yep. and and the support of Israel. You know yep. those two yep. things are. Inviolable is that the right word? And inseparable, yeah, and yeah, totally, totally uh, work together. And, and yeah, you know, so that's why know. no politician, zero in in the entire Congress, can say anything bad about Israel, because yeah. one of the gods out there. And by the way, that's why I got kicked off the air as a radio guy after 25 years. One of one of the gods out there is that you must support Israel. Period. You know, no question about it. You know, yeah, that's how it is. And and they not only, you you mentioned how they influence elections. Yeah. Well, they don't just influence them; they will make sure that a candidate is slammed and out of the race. Yep. 
yeah. uh, before that candidate can get anywhere. And I mean, it, yeah, and and they're trying to pass that uh, are trying to pass that that law now to make it a felony to uh, speak out yeah. uh, against uh, Ezra. I mean, that that's just insanity to me. That's that's first that's straight up First Amendment violation. It's like. Um, I just don't understand it, it. You know what it is? It's your, like what you said, that whole umbrella. And if you, and if you, and if you question anybody, anybody or any, um, entity under the umbrella, you're going to be attacked. You're going to be, uh, arrested or framed or just smeared in the media. Um, and, and you just, you're just going to be squashed. If you question anything under that umbrella, the mm -hmm. war economy, Israel, um, uh, uh, you know, just uh, just every, anything under that uh, big pharma, you know, all that stuff. Like mm -hmm. any you question, any of that stuff, and, and they're just gonna they're just gonna stomp you, and uh, or chase you or chase you out of the country, you know, or try to arrest you for you know telling the truth. Or, or like so, Wellstone, it, you know, Wellstone yeah. was a well known uh, personality, and they they killed him. Yep, and. Yep. And they ran Dennis Kucinich out of office, and they ran Cynthia McKinney out of office. The DNC did that. It wasn't the Republicans yeah. who, who did well. It was the Republicans who killed Wellstone. Uh, but Kucinich and uh, McKinney were, were were driven out by the DNC. And there's yeah. one other very very new just happened uh, in Florida. The governor of Florida. I don't know whether you saw this anywhere on face on Facebook. It was reported. Uh, that the uh, bed and breakfast people have said we're no longer going to support any activity f of um, uh, what, what's the official name of those bed and breakfast anyway th we're not going to uh, support any activity in the illegal settlements in Gaza so yeah. the, the governor of Florida becomes a pimp and a whore at the same time by saying, okay, we're not going to allow you to operate in Florida. Oh. So that makes his constituency very happy because it means he's thrown everything else out the window in support of Israel. And that's, well, that's okay. Yeah, it's okay to do that. So, and, that's unbelievable. Yeah. And so these laws, they don't come necessarily from on top. They come yeah. from people knowing somehow on the ground yeah. that they should be doing this. There was that pastor in Dickinson, Texas. We're, we're talking about very local here who passed a law that yeah. you can't get any yeah. f funding for your um, flood relief right. if you pledge to boycott Israel. Now, why would some pastor out of the blue do that? Well, he's part of an organization called the Religious Right for Israel, or you know, there are various ones, and I may not have the yeah. title right. Uh, but that's how deep the support for Israel goes, and that's how thorough it is throughout the country. So it's a little it's disturbing. It's on both sides. It's on the DNC and it's in the RNC, both sides. Yeah. And then Trump, Trump, I mean, and then Trump moving, uh, moving the embassy from Tel Aviv to, to Jerusalem. Yeah. Jerusalem. Jerusalem was initially when it w when it was um, when Israel was established by the British. Jerusalem wa was initially uh, set up to be like like the Vatican, like it was supposed to be open to all. It wasn't to be controlled by one government. You know, it was for all religions, all people. And, and since you know uh, 1948, they, Israel has just continued to to squeeze borders and, and expand territory. And they've gone into Syria. Um, they've closed Gaza off completely. And then they, I mean, they bombed, they strafed a U.S. warship, you know, for like three hours. Um, in, mm -hmm. I think it was the 60s, maybe, um, you know, before or during or after the 1967 war. And, and that was a U.S. battleship. And, and they strafed. You're, you're talking about the USS Liberty. Yes, exactly. Yeah, that was and, not a battleship. It was a. Uh, an information, information gathering ship, but all yeah, the right, same, right. a good friend of mine wrote the book. Stephen Green yeah. wrote the book on on that, and it was horrific. And it was ordered by Johnson, McNamara, and McCain's father. 
Admiral McCain to, yeah. to not defend the U.S.'s liberty. Why? Because, because Israel attacked it. That's why. It's That's always, okay. Yeah. It's always the same players, you know what I mean? And uh, it's just, it, uh, like they had said, a mm -hmm. on, the, on, the de on the deck. And then, and, and you know, and they were they were attacking the deck, you know, mm -hmm. you know, throwing napalm on the deck. Like these people are sitting, like it was just one of the most horrifying things I've ever read. Because that, you know, <clears throat> I was born in 1981, so there's a lot of stuff that I missed. But that was one thing I found out, and I was horrified by it. And then Israel later, Israel then said it was a mistake. Like, uh, you know, they couldn't see the big uh, red, white, and blue flying on the on the. On the you know, well, they on, on the ships, masses. Like, well, you uh, maybe you don't know they sheep dipped the planes to make it look like it was Egypt doing uh, yep, it. Yep, yep, yep. But it was so obvious to the crew that they were Israeli planes yep. that it got reported uh, correctly. But the media was rather slow, like what, 15 years right. behind yeah. in exposing yeah. what actually happened. And Israel was very proud of that. They actually had a museum where they were celebrating the brave Israeli soldiers who strafed the lifeboats of the American sailors trying to survive. So it's all very well documented in Stephen Green's book called Taking Sides, by the way. It's at the Kellogg Hubbard Library, folks, if you want to read a great book about history. Um, that's, that's a good one to read, and you'll It'll make you angry, so I warn you. Well, it should make yeah. you angry unless you happen to like yeah. strafing soldiers, sailors, and boats. Uh, yeah, um, boats. Yeah, uh, it's just unbelievable. That, so uh, we have to, and we still haven't apologized for it. You know. So we we have to wind up our first half hour, folks. This is Corner Kelly, and right. he's joining us from Boston, and we are going to be talking uh, in a few seconds, a few minutes about. Um, Assange and yeah. a few and Syria perhaps and a few yeah. other yeah. topics that uh, we find interesting and we're yeah. just having a little conversation here so right. uh, we'll we'll sign off for the time being and uh, this will be posted on YouTube you're probably watching it on YouTube so you already know that <laughs> and um, it'll be locally produced in Montpelier Vermont so thank you very much Connor and uh, we will be right back on the air in, uh, in a little while. All right. You're very welcome. Thanks for having me. I'll see you, see you soon. Yep.